but we're bringing canned food in, canned food. Um, so can you guys think of stuff, food you might see in it, like corn, you know, corn in a can, green beans, you got one? Peas. Peas, yeah, that's another one. So we're bringing canned food in. Canned food is good because it lasts a long time, okay? So if it takes a while for it to get to somebody, it's not gonna go bad. It's not gonna go bad. Um, so if you guys wanna participate, you can, with your, with your families, bring some canned food next week, and you can help people not be hungry. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. That's awesome, right? Um, because one thing, God gives us, just like God gives us light to shine in front of other people, God also gives us food that we can share. He gives us food that we can share. And most important, he gives us love that we can share with other people. He gives us love. Don't you feel so loved on Thanksgiving when you get a big old meal, a big old turkey, old mashed potatoes? You're like, man, my, my family loves me so much that they make this food for me. That's awesome. Well, we can share that love with people who don't have food to eat. And isn't that really cool? That's exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Exactly what Jesus wants us to do. Um, so, could we could we pray for a minute? Can you repeat after me? Let's pray. And we'll close out our children's message time. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. For everything. For everything. That you. That you. Have given me. Have given me. Light. Light. Love. Love. Food. Food. And family. And family. Help me. Help me. Share, share all of these things, all of these things with, others. with others, especially, especially Jesus. 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 We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right, you guys can sit down. Great job again, you guys. <laughs> Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All of our scripture texts appointed for us for today, they are challenging. They are challenging for us this morning. Who wants to talk about the end of the world? Yeah, it gets, it gets to be a little bit challenging. We, um, we hear the, the long list of warnings that Jesus gives us in our gospel text from Luke and and at the end of that reading of the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, O Christ, is a response. And, and while we know that we are victorious in Christ and that he will return in victory, we have that to look forward to. It also kind of can leave us wondering, okay, what exactly is that going to be like? And, and how long will we wait? And if we're waiting, and Scripture tells us to be ready, to be ready for when that time will come when the Lord will return. And we just kind of wonder what that would be like. Maybe some of us find ourselves wondering that. Is, is the last day coming here? We might wonder that quite often. Looking around the world and seeing all that's going on might be something that you think about somewhat more often than you thought you would. Or maybe it just kind of doesn't really cross your mind until it's brought up in scripture passages for, for, that come up in our, in our regular readings. Uh, but either way, we are called by scripture to to be ready, to keep the faith, to be ready, to keep awake and be vigilant. As, as Paul tells us in our, in our second lesson this morning from um, 2 Thessalonians, he tells us, don't be idle, don't be busybody, so don't be idle. Do the work that God has, has called us to do. But there's an overarching theme for us, for, for the, all of our scriptures, that just to kind of put it all together, all of our scriptures point to the return of Christ, but there's a there's a bigger idea 
presented to us this morning. And it comes to us in five words, just in five words, um, in one of our verses from 2 Thessalonians. And it's this, but the Lord is faithful. But the Lord is faithful. What a great verse of scripture for us to remember and to be reminded of from time to time. It comes to us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. I'll, I'll encourage us now at this time to, to bring out our, our, our bulletin insert with our readings. And let's go through uh, the first few verses of our second lesson. Now the invitation here for us is, is to hear these first few verses of Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. To hear it as though Paul is writing it to us as a congregation of St. Peter's. An encouragement that he has for us. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish, he will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. And we hear these, these verses, these first few verses of, of this letter that Paul writes, thinking about if he writes it to us as a congregation of St. Peter's, especially today on the, on the occurrence of our annual congregational meeting earlier this morning. Do you think Paul wants us to remember, especially now, and the point that we're in in the life of this church, in the season, the chapter that we're in, do you think that Paul wants us to remember that the Lord is faithful? That the Lord is faithful. He does. It's an encouragement to us that, that God is good, that we can depend on his word, that his word is true, and that we find our purpose in him. Why are we even here? It's all because of him. And even though, that, you know, Paul tells us, even though not all have received the gift of faith, the Lord is faithful to us. That's good news for us every day. Now, sometimes what, what life throws at us, we get reminded of God's faithfulness, whether we were looking for that reminder or not. I'll share with you a personal story that, um, that Derek and I, my husband Derek and I have from this past week of God's faithfulness to us, to our family. And I'll start out this story by saying a very important thing to say. He's okay. Derek is okay. That was the first thing that he told me when there was a bad car accident Monday night um, that my husband was involved in. And so he called me late at night and said, Cassie, I'm, I'm okay, uh, but I've been in a car accident and please come to my location. Okay, so he was on his way home from work, uh, working in Augusta as a law enforcement officer and worked late into the evening Monday and, and I get the phone call and my phone battery life is at 8%. And I have the, I have the Find My Friends app and we've got that for each other. And, and so I know, when he says come to my location, I know where to go, but I've got a very limited battery supply and didn't have the right cable for my car charger in my van put the kids in the car, go down the road. I was able to call him again to say, all right, which exit do I get off of to get to you? And he helped me with that. He was okay. God is faithful. Now, this is not a story of a car accident. This is a story of, of God's faithfulness to us. And we were shown that in so many ways in this past week. Just kind of, you know, your mind wants something significant like a bad car accident car accident happens, your mind starts reeling and going like, all right, the what ifs that you think about and, and, you know, thinking back to how things happen. But time and time again, God showed us his faithfulness, but the Lord is faithful. He truly is. I'll give you a couple of quick examples. That, that phone battery life example, you know, my phone battery lasted long enough that I could figure, I could call Derek again and figure out where he was. I was able to, my phone wasn't dead when he tried to call me. I was able to have enough battery to receive that call. 
God is faithful. The Lord is faithful. Went down the road to, to go and, and, and see how things had, had gone. And, and you know, the, the car, their car was, was total. The airbags had done their thing. The seat belts had done its thing. Derek read an article a couple days later about the model, the make and model car that he had. Turns out the exact year and make and model of this car that he was driving was the top rated of safety features of any car um, that year that this car was made. But the Lord is faithful. Derek was thinking about you know how how he had to veer to try to you know miss the, the cars ahead of him as best as, as best that he could. And he told me, you know, I when, when I went through my, my training for uh, to be a law enforcement officer, I was the top. I, I passed the top of my class for defensive driving tactics. But the Lord is faithful. God gave him the skills that he needed to be able to act quickly in that moment. But the Lord is faithful in ways that only he could be. All the folks that, that you know, in our lives and in our church family and friends that, that reached out to us and have been praying for us and, and uh, offered, you know, all the help that they could, it's just a testimony to the how, how the Lord is faithful to us. Now, that was a pretty significant event that has happened to us in the past week in our family, but what about things that are very significant that have happened in the life of this church at St. Peter's? Think about things that have happened in the past year and, and the season that we're in as a congregation. How might God be reminding us as a church that he is faithful? But the Lord is faithful. What a wonderful reminder from Scripture that we have. We might think about folks in our church family that over the past year have been have been really ill or injured or having you know just just unexpected things come up that you know require hospitalizations and treatments and all of that, and how God has has worked His amazing healing powers to to rid people of their diseases and. Heal them from their broken, their broken parts. God does that for us, but the Lord is faithful. We look back to last Sunday, All Saints Sunday. We got to look back on all the folks, all of our loved ones, our friends and neighbors and church members that, that passed away, that died in the faith within the last year. And now, but the Lord is faithful. They are now in the glorious presence of Jesus. God was always faithful to them. We get to remember those saints that are now in the church triumphant because the Lord is faithful in so many ways. What about a few weeks back or Reformation Sunday in the evening we gathered for our stewardship supper and we had such a fun time of fellowship and, and raising some funds for our youth mission trip coming up this summer. We, we raised thousands of dollars for our mission trip. Folks who were faithful givers and celebrating what our youth ministry is doing uh, to reach out to communities in need but the Lord is faithful. He's making these mission trips possible for you to be a part of life-changing times together to go and serve and use the gifts that they've been given to go and help others. But the Lord is faithful. Here's a big one and how, how the Lord has been faithful in this congregation for the last several months this year with our call committee. We've got a big Sunday coming up. This coming Sunday when we have a senior pastor candidate who will visit with us. We celebrate with the Lord's faithfulness that he has shown to us in, in our call committee meeting so often and, and for their ability to, to discern who would be the right candidate for this congregation and, and our church council helping through that as well. But the Lord is faithful. God will call the right senior pastor to the right church. He always does. The Lord is faithful. There are all, all kinds of significant events that we might think back to that, that show us in the past how God has been faithful to us. And in the coming year and years and years and years and generations to go, the Lord will remain faithful. That, that's just who he is. And so we're invited to, to see that, this big overarching theme from all of our scripture lessons for today, especially in Second, second Thessalonians. We're invited to see it. We're invited to see God's faithfulness at work. And then to go and share with others, just as Paul did with the church in Thessalonica. 
We need to share that Christ will come again. We need to share, hey, don't be idle. Do the good work that God has called us to do. We get to share that we can, we can look around and, and see the signs pointing to Christ's return. And to be ready. To be ready for that return. And so remember, when we put the bigger picture of our life together, the promises that we have in Christ's return, the bigger picture is Paul's encouragement to us. But the Lord is faithful. In Jesus' name. Especially this day for all of 
families who have lost loved ones while they were serving. And we pray for those who are currently serving overseas. We pray for David, Michael, Alex, Matthew, Kyle, and all the veterans in our hearts that we now name to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you our 2023 Church Council and our congregation. We pray that you would bless us in the year to come. We thank you for all those who have been elected to serve this year in church leadership positions, and we thank you for our annual meeting that we were able to have earlier this morning. Please bless us and continue us to make a difference in your name. Lord, in your mercy. We are great. Lord, we pray that you would be with and show your mercy and grace to all those who are sick or injured, those who have had procedures or are awaiting procedures, those who are going through treatments of any kind, for those who have lost loved ones and are grieving, for those who are in any kind of distress or sadness or despair. We pray, Lord, especially at this time, for Pastor Olin, Steve and Dottie, Pastor Form, Jim, Becky, Lindsay, Marlissa, Chris, Pam, and we pray for all those we now need to you on our hearts. Lord, keep these dear ones in your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace.
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us to be this, with them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this with remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ
Thanks be to God.